Hello and welcome to the Home and Learn video course for VisualBasic.net. I'm Kenny Carney and today we're going to be doing... What are we doing? If statements. Conditional logic. If statements. So you can go here on the website if you prefer the text version. Oh, let me put the software. I've already created a form here. So if you create a new project for yourself, add a button and a text box. I'll put them on the default names. Text box one. You double click your button. I already added some comments here. Conditional logic if statements. So for conditional logic, what are you doing? You're asking if one condition is met, then you should do this. If it's not met, then you do something else. Let me give you an example. And the conditional logic, it will use if, then, else, else if. Let me give you an example. Let's uh, set up a score, some sort of score. A dim score as we'll have it short. And I want to get it at that text box. So score and equal sign. Text box one, wasn't it? Text box one dot text. If statements are quite easy to be honest in Visual Basic.net, it starts with the word if. Oops. Oh my god. If. Then you want a condition to test. I want to know whether, it's, let's say, I want to check whether score equals 100. In a space, then the word then. Then, if you press your enter key, you get an end if. So if you're setting up an if statement, it has to have a corresponding end if. The condition itself, this is the condition, and it's got to evaluate to either true or false. So if score equals 100, that can only be either true or it can be false. Then in between your if and end if is where you write your code for whatever you want to happen. Let's just have a message box, right? Message box, but sure. And what kind of message? Or something. Wow. Maximum points. Because of that space. Let's see what happens when we start the program. Let me enter something in the text box. Let me enter 100. See what happens. Click me. Wow, maximum points. What if I change this to 10? What happens? Nothing happens. So we haven't written any code in the if statement to see what happens when it's not 100. Going back to the code, you can add an else part to your if statements. Else. Turn key on a new line. And a new message box. Could I just copy and paste that for the one? Sure. That should be out. Something really harsh. Loser. Right. So in here, you're testing whether a condition is true or not. If it is true, and you get this part of the code is getting executed. If it's not true, then the else part will get executed. Bug, start with that, debug 100. Well, maximum points. Let me put it on 10 again. And there we go, loser. Oh, I didn't get the maximum points, which is very harsh. As well as if and else, you can have else if, oh, there's one word, else if, else if, and you need your condition to test again. Let's see, score equals 90. And then you need another then, press the enter key, and let me have another message box as the code. Message box, it's a, oh, actually, sorry. Background, score. Right, so now we're testing two conditions. If score equals 100, so if that's true, then you get this message box. 
and you've got else if score equals 90. So if that evaluates to true, then it executes here. This one. Else, anything else, if it's not 100 or 90, then you'll get this one. Let me check. Me, oh, I'll type 90 in. Do we get excellent? Excellent score. Nine. Loser. Does my 100 still execute? Yes, well, that's my bytes. Go back to here. You can add more else if parts. You can add as many of these as, uh, as you want. Else if. Score equals 80. Then, then you need some more code. Let's have another message box. So, right, good score. So now I've got three conditions I want to test for. One is if the score is 100, else if it's 90, else if score is 80. So whichever of those evaluates to true, then it's on a little code gets executed. Let's see whether that works. What did I say? So 80, it should be good score. Good score. To help you narrow down your conditions, there's something called conditional operators. I've set them up already here. Conditional operators. You've got greater than, which is a right pointy bracket. A left pointy bracket, which is less than. Also greater than greater than or equal to, which is a right pointy bracket and an equal sign. And you've also got less than or equal to, which is a left pointy bracket and an equal sign. And you've got three more operators there, and or not. Let's see how they work. What you'll do for the first one. Give some space here. I'll say if score, I'll use a greater than, greater than, 50, see, and then I want to add an else if part, else if score is less than 50, then uh, do something else, copy and paste one of these, copy paste, mm -hmm. what's the same, you could score, bad score. So the condition is now not an equal sign, it's a greater than sign if score is greater than 50. And this part of the code gets executed. If score is less than 50, then we've got this other part of the code executing. Let's have a look. Two, um, so we put 60. Good score. That's the other uh, if statement still executing. 40, click me, bad score, loser. So for this one, and for the code here, it doesn't exit the code here. It will just go straight down and execute this one, which is why you saw the second mess, second message boxes, which is that one. Mm. You can also use the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Let's see how they work. Uh, I'll get rid of that one. It's quite straightforward, I think. I think you'll get that one. Right, so I can, I can say something like this. If score is greater than or equal to 90, and, and score is less than or equal to 99, Alright, so for this one, if score is greater than or equal to 90, which is that condition. So we've got two conditions here, and score is less than or equal to 99. So both of these conditions have to be true. And if they're both true, then you get this one executing. But if this condition, if this condition was say true and that one was false, then the whole thing would be evaluated as false and it would move on to this one. Let me have another score. The score is greater than or equal to 80. And 
So you can see it variable again, less than or equal to 89. Then let me see if that works. Let me have a score of exactly 100. Maximum points. Now I'll say 98. Is that exactly excellent score? Give me 88. And the third one gets executed. Anything else? 56. Lose on the loser. Let's go back to the code. I can also use all the all statement. I can say F score. That's not score, is it? Score equals zero or oh, score equals one and the upper message box. Mm, no scoring. Mm. That one. Mm, a different message. Seriously. Terrible. So now, for this one again, we've got two conditions to test. If the score equals 100, or score equals 1. If both of those, all right, if either of those gets evaluated to true, then the whole line is true and this one gets executed. So for this one, it could be 1, or this one could be 0. Let me test that one out. In the look. Zero. Seriously terrible. That's the other one executing. One. Seriously terrible. What happens if I put just 44? Well, it's goes straight into loser. And it doesn't execute that one at all. So if anything else other than zero or one, then this one does not get executed. There's also the not operators. So I can say something like if score does not equal 100. So it's a left pointy bracket and a right pointy bracket. Means if score does not equal 100, then uh, no maximum. Maximum. Start. That means anything, no maximum, loser. You can also nest if statements. You can have a nested if statement. Let me get rid of this one. I can say if score is greater than zero. And let me move this end if down to here, right at the bottom. That's the matching end if. Sometimes it's difficult to see. And that one gets indented. Let me close up the space there. Some extra space there. Right, so now we've got nested if statement. So the first one says, if score is greater than zero, then do all this. I can add an else part here if you like. Else. I could add, uh, not the these are. What's up? Uh, no score. So for this one, if it is greater than zero, then all, all of this if if statement will get executed. If it's not greater than zero, then we get this one. Let me try. Oh, didn't want that one. Oh. Come on, man, yeah, what's it doing? Right, no, no, that's okay. I've just got the wrong one there. Sorry about that. Right. I'm going to add a zero. And no score. That one gets executed. The reason I was getting a nice error message. 
is because I didn't convert this to a string. I could have done something like val text, and then you get a default of zero. There's one more thing I want to show you. Um, if you remember from the last lesson, we had uh, a message box, and I said there's something called a dialog results, and you can test what is it, which button on a message box was clicked. Did the user click yes or did the user click no? So this you can use an if statement. Let me get rid of this. I don't know whether we want that one. I have some code down here. All the comments. Let me cut it from here. And paste it in here. Right. There's a toggle on here for comments, uncomment, selected on ends or comment them. This one thinks the comments off. All right, this was my idiot test from last time, wasn't it? I don't think I need this one. Well, this is the code read last time. We set up a message. You are an idiot. Do you wish to continue? The message caption was idiot test. I mean, this time we've added a new type of variable, dialog result. And as you can imagine, it's to do with dialog results, which is message box. I've got message result there. The message result was message box. Not sure. So whichever of these two buttons is cancelled, is clicked, yes, no, cancel, you'll see it appear here. Let me have yes, no, rather than yes, no, cancel. All right, message box, the buttons, we'll have yes, no. So only two choices. All right, so here is the condition now. If message result equals dialog result dot yes, then execute this code. If message result equals dialog result, no, let do this one. Let's see how this one works. No, let me begin. You are an idiot, you must continue. Let me click yes first. You agree, idiot. Click me. Now I'll click no. You disagree, idiot. Alright, so that yes and no results went in here. Message results. And then we tested what was inside of that variable. This is the condition. If this one is true, do this. Or if that one's true, do that. Actually, you could get rid of all this. You could get rid of that one. And you could put an else part. Oops. All right, because it's, if there's only two, yes and no. And you can do the first one, yes. And if it's not yes, then obviously it must be no. And I think that's enough about uh, if statements. In the next one, we'll do something called a select case statement, which is also conditional logic. See you then.